My name is Steve Ford. I am currently Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Centricity Music. I'm a big believer you've got to ask yourself, what is success? You know, you've got to ask yourself that and then, you know, because some people's success will be a million records and some people's success will be putting dinner on the table, you know, but we talk a lot around here, you know, what, uh, what are the keys to success in the music industry? And I'm going to not just say Christian music, but music in general. You know, and, and for me, I, can, I think I can narrow it down. I think there's four things you need um, that have to be present for success. One is uniqueness. You've got to be unique as an artist. You can't just be like everybody else. You know, there's a, there's a million singer-songwriters in this world. What makes you different than, than those other million? You know, we can go to that. Uh, the, to me, the, you, the unique artist out this summer has been Godier. No one sounds like Godier right now. Yeah, another unique one, the Civil Wars. You know, there's a lot of guy and girl singers, but nothing like the Civil Wars. So, so uniqueness, an amazing live show. Let's go back to Civil Wars. Their live show is spectacular. There are two people on stage and compelling. So... Uniqueness, great live show, work ethic. How hard do you want to work? You know, are you willing to drive 16 hours between shows? What are you willing to do? Are you willing to walk into a room and work that room? We have a band here, their work ethic is just incredible. And their connection, their networkers, are, they're amazing at it. Then the next one is a great big hit song. And I tell people, pick three. If you don't want to write the great big hit song and you don't want to be unique and arty and all this other stuff, then you better be unique, you better be have an amazing live show, and you better be willing to work your brains out. You know, so that to me is the core element of success. I, I think you can go down any Adele. You know, she's an amazing singer, does a great live show, and her songs are great big hits. She doesn't Twitter, she doesn't, she doesn't Facebook, she doesn't write blogs, she doesn't need to. I think a hit song trumps everything, but she, you know, she's so strong in these other areas that she can be weak in one. You cannot be weak in more than one of those areas or I think you're, you're just getting lost in the midst of it all. To me, it's about connecting to your audience. How, do, how are you going to connect with your audience? That's live, that's via radio, that's via you know, social media. There's an amazing article I read yesterday in the New York Times about this summer is the summer that social media broke our pop songs. Carly Rae, Godier, both broke on YouTube before they ever broke on radio. They were number one on, on iTunes because of that before they ever got into the radio spectrum. So this is the beginning of the changing of how music is getting out there. Go on YouTube, and this article in the New York Times also said 75% of teenagers are now finding new music on YouTube. Make sure your music's there. Do a cool, find somebody with a great DSLR, do some videos, do work. You know, Connect with other people around you who want to who want to create with you. You know they're looking for people to do videos on a video. And you've got the music. There you go. Build your fan base. Let them into your thinking. Let them into your world. You know one of the one of the things we've been emphasizing a lot lately with our artists is Instagram. Easy, and people want to be this much closer to the artist than everybody else. And Instagram lets them in, take a picture of the green room backstage, your flat tire on the road at two o'clock in the morning, whatever it may be. Utilize the tools that are there to make your connection with your artists or with your audience. And man, you're gonna find out who those, who those what we call you know, the, the, the super fans are the ones, those 300, 200, 100, whatever it may be that will drive hours to see you, that know what your favorite cereal is. You know who those people are. Utilize the tools, whatever they may be. Think of it as a promotional area. Um, Spotify currently has 15 million subscribers in the United States. What would you do to have your music available for people to listen to for 15 million people? 
What you want to use those for, both Pandora and Spotify, is to build the fan base, to let people know what your music's about. It's the same way, you know, if, if I can get a song on a, on a station that has 15 million listeners, I'm right there. Now, you've got, there, you just can't put your music up there and expect people to find it and listen to it. You have to promote it. You have to, you know, put, put Spotify lists together, whatever it may be. It, I think they're very important pieces. Think of it as a promotional. Think about it as this is your way to maybe get people out to see your show, to see you at, at in concert. I love this song on Spotify. They're in my town. I'm going to go see them. I'm going to buy the t-shirt and I'm going to buy a CD. Then all of a sudden you've made $25 versus your point zero 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 one cent. It's not about the little silver discs anymore, it's about the whole package. It's about the brand of who you are as an artist. It's not just making money on, on CDs. It's about how do you get them to the shows, how do you be, build fans. Um, I would encourage some, you to go out and Google a thousand true fans. It's a, uh, it's a great article written by the editor of Wired Magazine that basically says you can survive as an independent artist on 1,000 true fans. Because a true fan will spend $100 a year on you. They're going to buy your t-shirt, they're going to buy your CDs, they're going to come to your shows, and can you live on $100,000 a year with 1,000 true fans?